this area played a pivotal role in the now lost ethic of dealing with rebellion in Islamic law. I'll sum it up in this. Al Imam Ali was confronted with the rebellion of the Khawarij. And among others, of course. But anyway, the, 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 stick with the Khawarij. So the Khawarij refused to obey Imam Ali and rebel against him. And he is asked, are they kuffar? And he says, no, they're not kuffar. They, 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 in fact, they worship more than we do. And they ask, are they, um, I forgot now, I think for Saq or something like that. And he says, again, more or less the same answer, no, they're not. And he says, they are our brothers who have transgressed against us. And then he says a statement that becomes very important in the creation of the jurisprudence of rebellion in Islamic law. He says, you, lakum alayna thalath. You have three rights over us. La namna'akum masajid Allah. We, we can't bar you from worshipping in Allah's mosques. وَلَا نَمْنَعْكُمُ الْفِيَأْ مَا دَامَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ معنا. And if you join us in battles, in other words, if you are, if you are part of our army in confronting our external enemy, we cannot deny you your share of payments. So in other words, we treat you like we treat everyone else. وَلَا نَبْدَأْكُمْ بِقِتَالٍ and we don't attack you first. This, the reason I underscore this today is this tradition of Imam Ali that basically says the state doesn't spill the blood of dissenters unless they begin with violence. And then you use violence only to repel their aggression. And it goes beyond that you can't kill the prisoners, you can't kill the wounded, you can't enslave them, a it, 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 whole, whole set of rules. There is another tradition attributed to the Prophet, a false tradition, that calls the Khawarij the dogs of hellfire and the true kafirs of the ummah. And the in Islamic tradition, which could not, Imam Ali was more knowledgeable about the sunnah of the prophet than anyone else. And there is no way he would have said about the Khawarij that you are our brothers, but you and you have the right to worship in our mosque and you et cetera, et cetera if in fact the Prophet had said that they were no longer Muslims. And anyway, there were no Khawarij by at the time the Prophet was alive. But according to this tradition, the Prophet sort of predicts that after I die, there will come a people who are the dogs of hellfire and so on. Today, remarkably, remarkably, the tradition that calls the Khawarij the dogs of hellfire and that calls them kafirs, and that says that basically you can kill them, has been used by this Egyptian government against the Muslim Brotherhood, has been used by Haftar and the clergy of Haftar against the government in Trablus. The, 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 the horrendous human rights abuses have been justified on the basis of that tradition. 
has been used by the pro-Emirati Yemeni forces against everyone. So constantly in modern Islam, whenever you want to kill your, your political opponent, you call them Khawarish Kilab al Kilab Nar. That they're the dogs of hellfire and they're the Khawarij and and then you start pontificating and, and you hear the same thing from Saudi that they, in Islam the Khawarij should be, just be killed and and then they call you know anyone that disagrees with the Saudi government Khawarij, anyone that disagrees with the Egyptian government Khawarij, anyone that disagrees with the authority of Haftar in Libya Khawarij. Anyone that disagrees with the pro uh, um, Emirati government, Khawarij. And within all of that, of course, no mention is ever made of the far more Islamically anchored tradition of Al Imam Ali and the way he clearly said, Khawarij or no Khawarij, you can't just simply spill their blood. I never thought when I wrote the rebellion book that I would witness a day where so many Muslims have lost their lives on the basis of an, a clearly invented tradition about how dissenters, people who dissent from whatever government there is, are simply Khawarij and you can just simply kill them in a summary fashion because they have no rights and they're just dogs of hellfire. I, I never thought, but, you know, when, when things are messed up, they're really messed up. But you can, I can't possibly betray to you how many Muslims have lost their lives. Even someone like Ali ibn Jum'ah the, the former Mufti of Egypt, when he was telling the Egyptian military that they can massacre people on Rabah at will and they don't have to worry about it, he again resorted to that tradition, which I know he knows is a fabrication. But all of that is part of the intellectual culture of this area. But notice that even in this area, it never, I mean, again, remarkably, when those people that go around and say, well, we can go and massacre people in Rabah because they, they or uh, Salman al odak can be executed because he is a dissenter against the government or there is an in you know the uh, or all the people who have been executed in Libya and Yemen because they rebelled against the government. Look at the ayah. Look look at the language of verse nine. If two parties disagree, the moral obligation, the ethical obligation. Is to establish justice between them. It doesn't talk about murdering either of the parties. And only if a party, you are allowed to fight them in order to bring them to a just resolution, not in order to bring them to your will, not in order to dominate them, not in order to vanquish them. A critical social ethic and a social ethic if Muslims would have learned so much social trauma and political trauma and bloodshed would have been avoided in her, their history. 